Today, we will be launching our largest vessel yet as we work towards satisfying the contract, build a new orbital station around the moon. This contract requires us to have a minimum of 4,000 units of liquid fuel on our station, which is by no means a trivial amount. For this reason, this contract will require two episodes. The focus of this episode will be getting all of that fuel into lunar orbit with only mid-tier technology available to us. This will require a more massive rocket than what we've been used to, which will present additional structural challenges. And I'll be looking at how to make more efficient use out of our engines through a technique called asparagus staging. I'll also use this opportunity to take my first look at custom action groups in the VAB. Let's get started. Taking a look at the contract here, build a new orbital station around the moon. And let's go through these objectives because there are, well, quite a lot of them. Uh, first, build a new station that has an antenna, docking port, and can generate power. The standard that's with all of these stations and bases contract. The station must be fully assembled when launched. I'm honestly confused by that statement because you can assemble these in orbit. You can do multiple launches and put the pieces together to meet the following requirements. And in fact, that's exactly what we're going to do because this is a big one. <laughs> so I would just, just ignore this one. I'm not quite sure what it's trying to say, but trust me, no, you can launch different modules, put it together. As soon as you meet the requirements, you've got it. So let's take a look at these requirements. Have a facility supporting at least 11 Kerbals. So much bigger than what we've had before. Have 4,000 units of liquid fuel in your station. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of liquid fuel. In fact, that's what this episode is going to be all about is getting all of that up there because it isn't insignificant. Anyway, moving along, having two pilots on the station. So you actually do have to crew this one. Maintain stability for 10 seconds as always and put that station in orbit about the moon. I would suspect these two really should be in the opposite order, but that's okay. But look at the completion payout and the advance we got and the reputation. Lots of good stuff. We do want to unlock one more tech note. If I make my way over to here, here I'll, I'll open it up so you can see everything that I have unlocked so far. But I also want to add to the mix advanced fuel system to give us some bigger and more useful tanks so we've got a whole bunch of rcs tanks which will be useful but the main things i'm looking for are actually the rocco max jumbo 64 fuel tank this is the biggest 2.5 meter diameter fuel tank in the game uh, to go bigger you have to go to a bigger diameter which comes up later in the tree but also i do love these angled fuel tanks uh, especially the slanted one here so we're going to be making use of this one as well but that's 160 science so we're going to grab that and although for this build you don't technically need it i do have quite a lot of money so i'm going to start getting some more buildings up to tier three starting with the vehicle assembly building the vehicle you're going to see today can be built with a tier two vehicle assembly building but with tier three our number of parts now become unlimited, well, limited to the resources of your computer, I suppose, because nothing really is ever unlimited. But we also are going to get custom action groups, and I do want to talk about those today. So we're going to click on that one, and then over here we're going to also move the tracking station up to level 3. Level 3 tracking station improves the deep space network. It allows you to track unknown objects. These are asteroids and comets something for a future tutorial and you also get the maneuver tool available this is the maneuver tool that helps you do interplanetary transfers none of that is coming up in this episode or the next one but you know what we're going to upgrade it anyway just to do it and we're going to get started with our build by going once again into the space plane hangar i do like the space plane hangar for stations and base construction and here she is and this is why i like the space plane hangar as things start getting bigger you get to slide back and forth this way which you can't do in the vehicle assembly building you can see how big it is going to get but again all we're going to concentrate on today is this fuel tank portion of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this docking port as the root part 
So that allows me to select all of this and throw it away. We will get to that next episode. This episode is going to deal with getting this in orbit about the moon. And that's going to be the most difficult of these launches because this is by far the heaviest payload we're going to have to lift. Now, as the contract requires, this thing has 4,000 units of liquid fuel. So I accomplished that by putting on a Rocco Max Jumbo 64 fuel tank, followed by three Rocco Max X200 fuel tanks, and then an itty bitty little FL-T100 fuel tank. So you, it's just simply a collection of fuel tanks. I got the uh, Rocco Max brand adapter number zero two at each end, and then the Clampatron docking port at the end of each of those. And that's the whole, oh, and then some blinky lights, of course. I have to always have blinky lights and, and we got to represent with the flag. But that's the whole thing. It's not a complicated build. Now, if we click on one of these tanks, you will see that it not only has liquid fuel, it also has the matching amount of oxidizer. The contract only specifies liquid fuel. So you can actually save yourself a lot of weight by taking out the oxidizer, or if you want, using tanks that are just liquid fuel tanks. Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm not scared of a little bit of extra weight. In fact, that's what this video really is about, is how do we deal with something that's so gosh darn heavy, but also I want something I'm going to put to use. Liquid fuel alone is only good for jet engines and nuclear engines. I don't have the nuclear engines unlocked. What I want to do is bring a lander to said station so that the fuel that's in here can be used to refuel that lander over and over again so that we can go and land in as many biomes on the moon as we want. But in order to get this thing into orbit, what we need to do is get this over to vehicle assembly. So let's do that. And we'll orient this, let's see, not that way. Let's, I'm gonna orient it this way up. And we're going to need to build something pretty big underneath it. So let's scroll on up. And we'll start off with cleaning up the top end here, which isn't very aerodynamic. So I took a 1.25 meter fairing and I flipped it upside down. You've seen me use this trick before. This allows me to build the fairing downwards to cover up this whole top end. And then we'll cap this off with this nice, more pointy nose cone. And I'm going to take the docking port and I'm going to add it to our staging diagram so that when we no longer need this nose cone, we can stage to get rid of it. But I would like to push that nose cone away. And for that, I'm going to use a separatron. It's not going to need most of this fuel. So I'm going to take almost all of this fuel out of here. And then we're going to use the translation tools to move it towards the center of the nose cone. I'm not concerned about getting it exactly in the center. In fact, having it off center a little bit will work well because that will mean the nose cone will get pushed off to one side or the other. And we'll fix up our staging here so that all this stuff stages at the same time. Build our fairing to clean this all up. Then we'll shift our attention to the bottom end where we are gonna need some sort of control center to ensure that we're gonna fly this thing. So I started with a 1.25 meter service bay inside of which I put a hex probe core. I then used the reroute tool to make the hex the root part to ensure that this is going to be our control point when we're in flight. I then added on one Z200 battery plus four more Z100 batteries to ensure that I have enough electricity because under that went two sets of the advanced reaction wheels. Even with that, this thing is a little bit sluggish when it spins around, so you might even want to add more reaction wheels, but I was fine with what it is. But if you add more reaction wheels, you want to put in more batteries to make sure that you don't run out of electricity if you happen to be on the dark side as you're slugging this thing around. I then added on a single Communitron 16 antenna, which will do fine for communications followed by four Oxstat solar panels for electrical generation. I then used a 2.5 meter fairing to kind of clean this whole section up. And because this is connected only by that flimsy docking port, whenever I use a docking port as a connection point, I want to use struts to kind of shore that all up. So four struts went in there. And let's get into talking about action groups now that our control section is done. So I would like to, once I am in orbit, I would like to open up these doors and extend this antenna. Now, one of the things I can do in flight, of course, is right click on it to bring up the 
context menu and then just extend the antenna that way. But you can also, once you have a tier three, either space plane hangar or vehicle assembly building, go up to the actions tab. And now we have action groups said custom one, two, three, four, up to 10. These are actions you can set to the number keys on your keyboard. Custom one is obviously you press one, two, three, four, and 10 is you press zero. So let's say for, I want to use custom 10. I'm going to click on that and I would like the antenna to extend. So after clicking on the antenna, notice how it highlights nice and blue. I can go over here and these are all the things I can do with the antenna. Notice one of them is to extend the antenna. I can also toggle the antenna, which means every time I press zero, it either extends or retracts depending on what state it's in. I'm going to hit toggle. That seems more flexible. And I'm also going to click on the service bay and you notice that it has the toggle option as well. So now in flight, instead of having to right click on these parts, I can simply hit zero and you can do this with science experiments and all that kind of stuff and bring down all of that right clicking you have to typically do in game. Okay. So here we have something that at least we'll have some control when it's in space. What about actually getting it there? So let's talk about budget. So we will visit once again our Delta V map and we can see here that a capture about the moon is 280 meters per second. Now I want to capture into a 50 kilometer polar orbit about the moon. A polar orbit will mean our station will pass over every biome on the moon. Remember the ultimate goal is to put a lander onto this station. So that makes every biome of the moon available to that lander and a 50 kilometer altitude I find is a nice altitude for that lander to rendezvous with when it's coming off of the surface of the moon. But you can see here on the Delta V map that this 280 is technically for capturing into a 14 kilometer equatorial orbit. There is a bit of a difference between that and a 50 kilometer polar orbit, but the difference isn't enough for us to worry about. Remember, we're going to be rounding all this up anyway, so I'm going to stick with the 280 number. And the transfer out to the moon, of course, is 860. And if I add those two together, I get 1,140 meters per second. So I want the transfer vehicle to do at least that. Also, I like the transfer vehicle to handle the upper part of our ascent as well. And that means uh, adding on maybe up to about another thousand. So I would like this ascent part to be somewhere between 1,140 meters per second and 2,140 meters per second. And what I found worked for me, if I go over here to tanks, is I take that newly unlocked Rocco Max Jumbo 64 and put on two of them. Yeah, this is going to be a big boy. And then under that, it's going to be the RE-M3 mainsail liquid fuel engine. And if we check out over here, actually all of this is going to go first. We have 5,573 meters per second thrust away to 1.18. Again, a thrust away to around one is going to be absolutely fine for us. This seems like a heck of a lot of Delta V. Well, of course it is. It's counting not just the fuel I just added here, but all of this stuff in our payload as well. And for this contract, that 4,000 units of liquid fuel needs to get to orbit about the moon. I can't use that. So I can't count. I, won't, I don't want to be using this up. There are two ways to tell the game, don't use this fuel and don't include it in your calculations. Way number one is to go over here to the docking port that's connecting these two, right click on it. And you can see here, there's a button here that says disable crossfeed. This will prevent you from being able to transfer resources through this docking port. So if I click that, notice how my Delta V jumps down to 2080. It is no longer counting this. And when I fly, it won't be using this fuel. And that works perfectly fine. My issue with that though, is I know me, and I know there's going to be some point in the future where I'm going to have something docked at this docking port and I'm going to be trying to transfer resources to it and I'll be confused as to why it's not working. And if you're like me, you might not want to do it that way. So I'll show you a second way to do it. We're going to re-enable that cross feed, get that Delta V back. You can also simply right click on a tank and turn those tanks off by clicking on these little green triangles that says we are not allowed to use this fuel. The game won't use this fuel and notice that our Delta V went down once we did that. So we're just going to go to each of these tanks and simply turn them off. 
that and like that and like that and like that and don't forget the little baby guy up here as well and so that brings our delta v down to 2080 meters per second thrust weight of 1.18 that is going to be perfectly serviceable now comes the job of getting this thing up to orbit and once again i'm going to budget the generous 3,800 meters per second for the purpose of this tutorial, that gives us a total of 4,940 meters per second for this mission. Uh, let's just round that up to an even 5,000. So I wanna get at least 5,000 meters per second going with this. And that is going to be not a small task. I mean, this thing's already getting pretty tall. I don't want it getting any bigger than it already is. So let's put on some radial boosters. So we'll start off here with a pair of the TT-70 radial decouplers. And then we're gonna go to our biggest engine I've yet to unlock, which is this one here, the LFB KR-1 by two twin bore liquid fuel engine, which is actually not only an engine, it's also a fuel tank, but the engine has a mighty 2000 kilonewtons of vacuum thrust. So we'll put these on just like that. In fact, let's, uh, just right now, use our translate tool and slide them down so that the engine bells are roughly matching down there on the bottom. All right, so what we got now so far? We have these two coming on, and then we're gonna stage, and then we're gonna go with the main core, according to this right now. And that gives us some more delta V. There's 1,041 meters per second in this stage for a total of 3,110 meters per second. If I take a look at the thrust to weight, um, it is 1.9, which is okay. When you're in the lower atmosphere, a thrust to weight at around two is probably, I think, pretty nice. It's always nice to have a little bit more than what you might need. So that's nice, but I, I would really like to add more fuel onto this and try and push up more, uh, this even more. But I know as I put on more tanks that I'm gonna start losing this thrust to weight. I really would love to have more thrust here at the bottom. Well, one easy solution is, well, just simply, I got this engine here, why not just put it into the mix with these guys so that all three of these are going. Now I got plenty of thrust down here at the bottom, but I took a hit on the Delta V because what's happening now is, well, all these engines are now in the mix. I'm not only using the fuel in these radial tanks, but I'm also using the fuel in the central core. So by the time I stage these guys, I got less fuel for this engine to work on and that brought down my Delta V. I would love to be able to use all three of these engines while only using the fuel in these radial tanks while keeping this middle core full. And I can accomplish that by going over to fuel tanks and grabbing me an FTX-2 external fuel duct. So I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna go down to here and I'm gonna click on one of the radial tanks like that. And then I'm gonna go over to the central core I'm gonna click again and notice that I got one on the other side because I did have two-way symmetry. And I wanna take a really close look at this fuel duct. Notice the arrows here. It is showing fuel flow. These ducts are pumping fuel from this radial tank to this core tank. So although we're gonna still use all three engines down here at the bottom at the same time, as this engine uses the fuel in this tank, the fuel we use is going to be replaced by what's going in the radial tank. So we're gonna be using this fuel much more quickly because it's basically gonna supply all three of these engines down here on the bottom. But if you take a look, our Delta V went up with that maneuver. So this is a more efficient way to set up your staging. Use all the engines so you get the most thrust out of your engines that you can, but to arrange these fuel ducts so that you're still using the fuel from just the radial one so you can ditch these and their heavy engines as quickly as possible. That's the most efficient way to go. We call this style of staging asparagus staging. It's a great trick to keep in mind when you're doing more heavy launches. So now what we have is a setup with how we are using fuel and these engines that's working really well for me. I'm getting a really nice high thrust to weight and I'm getting a decent delta V. Now, because our thrust to weight is so high, I can now keep adding fuel tanks. And I wanna keep adding fuel tanks until this thrust to weight gets down around two. And what ended up accomplishing that was a Rocco Max X200-16 
followed by a Rockomax X200-32. And to finish this off, I'm going to use this newly unlocked C7 brand adapter slanted 2.5 to 1.25 meter fuel tank. It's a mouthful, but it's this lovely little slanted one. There's also the not slanted one if you'd rather use that, but I love the slanted one that's like that. And there is under aerodynamics, a matching slanted nose cone. Whoops like that and that finishes this off really nicely I now have a thrust to weight of 2.02 that is great and my total Delta V has gone up to 3745 so looking good looking good but still not enough I need more well I still got room for more boosters so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab using the alt key and make a copy of the booster I got on the side and with the snap on I'm going to put two more right here and I want to line these up so they look nice so I'm gonna look at the decoupler here use my translation tool click on the decoupler make sure the snap is off and slide them so that these guys are looking in the same spot and then that'll mean that these bells are all at the same level down here at the bottom so in doing that what is what do I got well if I take a look down at these lower engines only these guys are in the bottom stage and that's 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 a thrust to weight ratio that won't even get me off of the ground but of course we know how to fix that we can put all the engines on here at the same time that is great and that is groovy that is perfect but I would like to improve this Delta V now if you take a look because I used a, because I copied these side ones now what's happening is I got all four of these uh, boosters all feeding their fuel into the middle one um, and what will end up happening, if I take a look at my staging right now, I got the these radial boosters being staged first and then the side ones here being staged second. Now, that's kind of a dumb way to do this because what's going to happen here is these guys are all going to drain at the same time and then I'm going to, you know, I should really just stage them all at the same time rather than going stage stage. But what's better? is to run all five of these engines just off one set of radial boosters let's say these guys right here so all the fuel to feed all of these engines are all going to come from this one and it's matching one on the other side and then when these are empty everything else is still going to be full and we'll just stage those that's the more efficient way to go and you can accomplish that by simply taking the fuel line clicking there dragging it across so that this tank is now feeding this tank and then th and as well as its partner here on the other side while these tanks are feeding the central core so now when all of these engines fire at the same time we're going to be just running off of the tanks in this radio booster and this one when those are empty we stage those then we're running off of these tanks here when these are empty we stage those and our Delta V is now up to 4,095. Now, that unfortunately actually is not correct. The game can sometimes get a little bit confused with the fuel lines and the complicated staging. It will get confused as to what order do you really want to do these things and will not drain the tanks in the order in which you think. The way you can check this is if we zoom in and let's take a look, start with our core. If we right click on this lower tank, we take a look at this thing called flow priority. And if you're not seeing this, by the way, make sure you go into your settings and turn on advanced tweakables. This thing has a flow priority of negative 10. The flow priority tells the game what order to drain the tanks in. The higher the number, the higher its flow priority and the earlier in which it's going to be drained. We want all the tanks in this central core to have the same flow priority. So if I click on the one above it, it should say negative 10 as well. So the central core is fine. Let's take a look at our next stage up, which is this one. This engine has a flow priority of positive 10. Good, bigger than here. So this tank will get drained before the core tank. But if we move up the stack, Notice this one has a floor priority of 30. And in fact, if I click over to the other side, it's 32. In fact, the game's so confused, it's going to be draining these tanks before the no matter what. Now, I can get into more fuel lines, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, if this guy is 10, the one above it should be 10. So I'm going to turn it down to 10. 
and the one above that is also should be 10. So I'm just going to keep working my way up and the one above that make that 10 as well. So now all of these tanks are really going to be drained at the same time and because of the symmetry of course same things happening on the other side and you can see our delta V has gone up significantly from that. Let's check our final booster on this side. This one on the bottom has a flow priority of 20. That's sensible, a bigger number than this one which was at 10. But if we make our way up this one should be 20 as well. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Actually, it would have been fine at 30, but we're going to make them all the same. And this one should be 20. And this one should be 20. And now we have a much more sensible 4,721. We're closing in on what we want. And we have a monstrous thrust away ratio, so we are free to keep adding tanks to this. Now don't change the first two tanks that we had originally set up. Those are already the way we want them to be, but we can add tanks to the most recent two that we added on. And what I ended up doing was replacing the X200 X16s and replace those with another Jumbo 64. So these outside boosters are going to be bigger than the other boosters and then this guy can go back up and then I'm gonna have to rotate this to make sure it is slanted still towards the center here and now I got a total delta V of 5017 I have a launch thrust to weight in a vacuum of 2.01 remember I do want this to be at least 1.33 but you can see 1.88 so we'll be tweaking this down in just a little bit but now I got a rocket that's gonna work for me and by the way if you have radial boosters that are of different sizes it is more efficient to get rid of the bigger stages first the quicker you can get rid of all of that mass the better so I'm staging this in the right order let's make sure of that uh, first those guys are gonna stage and be released and then these guys are going to stage and be released okay this was a complicated build but actually what's left is stuff that you see me do on pretty much all of the builds you've seen in this series these principles don't change just because the rocket is getting bigger. So I added on four AV-T1 winglets to the bottom of the core here for a little bit of extra aerodynamic stability. These giant boosters are definitely going to be wobbly, so I used some struts to stiffen them up, putting two struts towards the top of each of the boosters, and to help the boosters separate cleanly from the rocket, I also put two separatrons again towards the top of the boosters to push the top end away from the rocket, and then aerodynamic dynamics will take care of the rest and we put on some launch clamps down here on the bottom and all that's left is to adjust that launch thrust to weight ratio so right now put this on sea level because now we're talking about at launch our thrust to weight ratio is 1.87 that is too big so we're gonna need to tweak this down now we got five engines all going off at launch but don't forget these side ones I've already set them up the way I want. I don't want to mess with that, nor do I want to mess with the core. I'm just going to turn down the thrust on these guys, which are going to be the first boosters we're going to be losing. And again, just simply turn them down until we see a launch thrust weight. I like around 1.33. And with that, this thing is ready to go. Despite being significantly larger, you fly this rocket in pretty much the same way as my previous rockets. The only thing being different is that you may want to pay a little more attention to the staging, as it is easy to miss when only two of the five engines go out. And as we watch this ascent, I want to take this opportunity to welcome aboard my most recent Patreon patrons and YouTube members, Raymond Weaver, Monsieur Mike, Zach Garfield, Gazoo Khan, Mr. Wilson, and Michael Sears. Thank you all so very much for adding your support to this channel along with all the rest of my most wonderful patrons and members. It is truly appreciated. Of course, once in orbit, it was time to set our course for the moon. As previously mentioned, I will be inserting into a 50 kilometer polar orbit, something I've also talked about in detail in a previous tutorial. This thing being so much bigger doesn't change anything that you do. And while I perform the final insertion, why don't I go over the main takeaways from this episode? This is my first look at custom action groups, a great way to cut down on all that right clicking you have to do in the game. 
but the main topic was dealing with a more massive vehicle. To that end, we looked at asparagus staging, a very useful technique that allows you to maximize the use of your engines while consuming fuel in an efficient way. This also had us looking at fuel flow priority. This number can be accessed by right-clicking on a fuel tank. Remember, the higher the number, the earlier that tank gets drained. At times, the game may not be draining the tanks in the way you intend, so always make sure to check this with complicated builds. And with that, I'm drawing this episode to a close. Make sure to join me for part two, when I will be taking up another module for this station, as well as her first crew. This will necessitate looking at how to efficiently rendezvous with a vessel in a polar orbit about a body other than Kerbin. I hope to see you then.